In this video, we focus on situations where a single thermostat controls conditions in several rooms. This is commonly referred to as a master-slave control. You can find additional sections related to environmental controls on the website, in the link below. Residential buildings that use air-based environmental controls often have a single thermostat for the house, or maybe one on each floor. I grew up in a house with a thermostat in the hall near the return grill for the system. It was comfortable in the hall. Other rooms, not so much. A single thermostat might also be the main driver for a boiler for a wet central heating system. Even if the radiators in the rooms have TRVs, there's still an override from that master control. A thermostat might be located in the lounge with other rooms being heated or cooled based on the lounge temperature. Of course, the thermostat might also be in the core of the house and thus relatively insensitive to the changing weather patterns outside, or it might be adjacent to an entry and thus sensitive to door openings. What could possibly go wrong? Open plan offices often have sensors attached to, say, central columns, and they might control a number of ceiling mixing boxes question becomes how representative is that of the conditions some distance from the sensor. Look at the sunlight patterns in this open plan. What could possibly go wrong? And another sensor in that open plan office is at the core with a main return grill up just above it. How much delay is there in the sensed condition versus conditions it's drawing from? Again, what could possibly go wrong? An office building with lots of cellular offices and fewer thermostats than rooms is essentially a master-slave regime. If those offices have different occupants patterns or even a different orientation from the master sensing location, what could possibly go wrong? Occupants of master control rooms expect comfortable conditions. Everyone else, well, they would benefit from a careful analysis of master-slave controls. Back to our dozen office model or case study. In this case, we're going to focus in on a master room and two slave rooms next to it. So these are the three zones that we're going to focus on. The slave zones are adjacent to each other. Uh, the master room has an additional outside wall, so slightly more sensitive to boundary conditions. If we look inside at the controls, there's the master control. So in this particular case, it's going to sense a the resultant temperature in the master zone and actuate within that zone and the period data is our usual basic controller with the capacities for heating and cooling and set points as set up in dialing in capacity. We could also use a proportional control, but let's stick with a basic one for this particular point in time, which just has a limited amount of information Let's carry on to the next control. So here is a slave, and that has to point to the index of the zone where the master sensor is, and actuation needs to be within the tenth zone, i.e. within the first slave. And then the period data basically is a slave capacity controller, which points to the, this is control law 11, it points to control law 10, which is the master controller, and it has set up 1,000 watts of heating capacity and 1,000 watts of cooling capacity. Very little information related to that. If we look at slave zone 2, that's pointing at the master zone for its sense condition. It's actuating in zone 11, or the second zone, in this particular case, we have a slave capacity control set up 
let's say they commissioned this and there proved to be only 800 watts of heating and cooling available in there. Let's see what would happen. So if we go to simulation and go to the simulation presets, let's take a winter period of a week with a five minute time step. So there'll be 20 startup days, we're saving all the information and we're running at a five minute time step. So integrated simulation, interactive, let's watch it as it happens. Initiate simulation. Let's monitor the progress. Let's look at the actual base case room in this model, as well as the master and the two slaves. Let's track their temperatures as the simulation progresses. And commence simulation. Master, focus. And continue. About 300 megabytes of information is being saved off as the simulation progresses. The startup has completed, and here we go. The red line is the master. You see that the slaves uh, take a little while to come up to temperature, and they're running a little bit cooler. We also see some ratcheting on the Thursday in the second slave zone, which happens to have an additional person in it. So it's reacting a little bit different. Saturday is a shorter day and Sunday is basically has only frost protection. So let's look at the results analysis. Again, we'll focus on just the master and the two slave rooms. Go into graphs, plot parameters. Let's look at the dry bulb temperature in the room, the resultant temperature in the room, which is essentially what is being sensed, and plot the heat, the sensible heating and cooling that's being put into it. And we'll draw that. Now, lots of lines drawing on top of each other, so let's go in and adjust. Red line is the master room, um, so the dry bulb temperature goes up and we're controlling to that resultant temperature, which is nice and flat. And then we come to a day where oh, there's solar radiation available and then the temperature is going above the set point. And we see that the heating, the heating is shown down here. Uh, basically, these are the slave zones are scaling from that, but they have less capacity um, and so they are responding rather more slowly. It's a little bit cooler in those rooms. And let's also look at the and inquire about. Let's see about the energy delivered. Okay, so the sensible heating, the hours required are the same for all the rooms. The kilowatt hours per square meter uh, are different. Again, we have less capacity uh, in those rooms. That is as expected. If we look at summary statistics of the resultant temperature in the room, then we see we have uh, the slave to, because of additional occupancy, is getting a little bit warmer, but because of the less capacity, it's also got a slightly lower minimum. But the, the mean value and the standard deviation is essentially the same for all of those rooms.